So this third problem is similar to the second one, but here we are talking about uh, a bandwidth parameter. In the previous case, we discussed about a size of GRC in terms of the spatial resolution. Now we are talking about uh, what is the bandwidth of the spectral band within which a sensor is sensing the energy. Okay. So see, when I talk about uh, uh, photons are, I mean, photons at a different wavelength are combined together to constitute an energy component. Okay, if you increase the number of wavelength, you increase the range of wavelength, then obviously what will happen? If you increase the range of wavelength, it means at large number of wavelength, photons are generated and they are combining, they are summed up to constitute an energy component. So in the same way, when you increase the area, then uh, the reflected energy from different uh, points, interaction points, when they summed up, and uh, after summing up uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the GRC, uh, in which the spatial resolution is more, so energy is, uh, energy is more in that case. Similarly, if we have uh, multiple spectral bands, we selected, uh, we select multiple spectral bands to sense the GRC, then the spectral band that is having larger bandwidth will sense the more energy from, the, I'm talking about same GRC, ground resolution is same, uh, the GRC is same, Okay, the, the same GRC is being sensed in a multiple spectral band. So energy will be highest in the particular band that is having ha uh, largest bandwidth. Why it is so? Because if largest bandwidth means large number of uh, uh, wavelength, the range is large and there are large number of wavelength. So photons that, that, that constitute an energy component, they will be large. Okay, energy within the photon will further increase and when I mean, they will sum up. So that will be resulted into the highest energy component. Fine. So the total energy that is collected at the sensor will be highest uh, in the case where the bandwidth of the spectral band is highest. So here only two spectral bands are given and uh, they are characterized by their bandwidth B1 and B2. B1 is the larger bandwidth we have in case of B2. So the last option is correct. Uh, the highest we get uh, spectral bandwidth, bandwidth B2. Now this fourth problem is related to the geometrical interaction of electromagnetic radiation at the surface. So we discussed about two kinds of uh, reflection, specular as well as diffuse. So if surface is, is, is smooth, then there is a specular reflection. And when the surface roughness increases, or even uh, uh, that is also related with the uh, wavelength uh, as well as the angle of incidence. There is a formula. So if that inequality is satisfied, where the uh, surface roughness, if it is less than lambda divided by eight cos theta. So in this, in that case, we have a specular. While in the opposite case, we have a diffuse. So in this case, this is the background and fundamentals behind this problem. Now we'll come to the actual uh, uh, problem where uh, the incident energy is EI at a particular point and there is a reflected component. So what is the magnitude of reflected component following Snell's law? 
Mills law tells us angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. So by uh, uh, applying this law, we know what is the direction of angle of what is the direction of reflected energy. Okay. But what happens in the direction of reflected energy that is uh, that is given by the Snell's law by satisfying angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. Total reflected component from the point is aligned along the direction of reflection only in case of specular reflection. Okay, once the surface roughness increases, okay, and the surface starts behaving uh, a diffuse, uh, starts behaving rough, then in that case, what happened? Uh, the energy components spread. Okay, around the direction of reflection that we get from Snell's law. And finally, if surface is diffuse, so in in all the direction, in the 180 degree solid angle, uniformly energy is reflected. So the highest will get only in case of specular reflection. While in other case, Energy spreads in other direction also. Okay. So the uh, third option is correct. Uh, please let me check how you have done it. Okay, good. Most of you have done correctly. Uh, now the fifth problem is related to the uh, type of scanning system. So the spatial resolution of an image acquired by airborne platform mounted uh, the spoon scanning system depends on. So the spatial resolution is dependent on the the scanners are sensors instantaneous field of view. In this boom scanner, we have only one CCD and that CCG looks towards ground, okay? So that IFOV of the CCD, uh, that, that CCD looks towards ground, but finally there we have a optical system in between the CCD and ground resolution set, okay? So the IFOB of that optical uh, optical uh, that optics, if that IFOB is large, it means that optics is uh, sensing the large area. Okay, if it is uh, if the IFOB is less, it means that is sensing the small area. IFOB is one factor that govern the spatial resolution. Okay, and the second part is 
when you increase the height from the ground let's say ifo is fixed it is theta so we have a projection on the ground okay and if you increase the height then that projection that footprint on the ground will further increase so that footprint on the ground is actual the spatial resolution that is area that is being sensed so two parameters govern the spatial resolution the ifov of the sensor and elevation of airborne platform from the ground so the last option is correct in this case the sixth problem is again related to the functioning of facebook scanning system how it operate so the dwell time is highest uh, in facebook scanning system compared to the facebook scanning system so as we have discussed in the uh, in the lectures the assembly of facebook scanning system and facebook scanning system so in facebook we have only one ccd okay Uh, but in between the area that is being sensed and ccd we have a optical system so that optical system is comprised of rotating or oscillating mirror okay so that mirror actually collect the energy and just confined it at its focus so uh across the trajectory of the flying air uh, of the airborne platform okay uh a width is covered specific width is covered we call it swath okay so along the trajectory uh, an area strip is covered and that area strip has a certain width okay so across the trajectory uh, if you uh, draw line so along the line Certain number of uh, ground resolution cells are connected. In case of Wisboom scanning, they are uh, from one end. The energy uh, from one one corner. The scanning system starts sensing the energy by rotating the mirror. Okay, so it's kind of uh, sequential scanning from one end to another end. okay and uh, it is performed by rotating the mirror and finally single ccd collect the energy from each grc across the line okay which are there across the line of uh, trajectory so in that case that uh, along a one line the total width is covered in a given time okay let's say uh, capital t time is allocated while in case of facebook scanning the number of ground resolution cells which are there okay so the width of the strip area strip is decided on the basis of charge coupled devices which are connected in series so there is a area of ccd in case of facebook in case of facebook scanning system okay so there is no intermediate optical system okay that divert energy from grc to the uh, single ccd as in case of facebook scanning system so what the system does in case of facebook scanning system so the the area of ccd just look towards the ground okay across the trajectory okay and they see for a specific time and that that time is entire time t if we synchronize the operation of facebook and facebook scanning system and if we decide a similar parameters specifically a time allocated to sense uh entire uh, ground resolution cells across the trajectory okay so in case of facebook scanning single ccd uh, single grc one grc is given entire time t they are sensed for that entire time while in case of boosting scanning system that time t is further divided by total number of grc across the trajectory okay along the swath so the correct option is 
Fuspum uh, scanning system is comprised of array of CCD. Okay. This is the reason why Okay, most of uh, most of you have done it uh, correctly. Seventh problem: uh, spectral band selected in visible spectra generates pixel sensing. Okay, so how much information is given in the uh, problem itself? the band information is given the sensing is done in visible spectrum only so it is clear visible spectrum we have a wavelength range less than 3 micrometer fine so if you see the total uh, so in a two part you need to analyze uh, the energy energy based analysis to generate uh, dn numbers the first part what are the component that is reflected uh, that is uh, outgoing from the grc now the second part what are the energy components which are reaches at the sensor okay because ultimately pixels are generated on the basis of total energy reaches at the sensor Okay, so the information which we are uh, we extract from the given problem, this problem talks about energy-based analysis, energy-based analysis at the sensor, not at the at the GRC. The second one, that is uh, the spectral band is in visible spectrum, so it's less than three micrometer. It means from the GRC, the outgoing energy is only constituted by the reflected energy component. Fine. So that reflected energy component goes towards the sensor. At the sensor, the energy components which are sensed, they are reflected energy as well as atmospheric scatters, which are falling in FOV of uh, sensing device. Okay. It's not only reflected component, as it is asked, choose the most appropriate option. Reflected energy is correct, it is there, but the total energy reached at the sensor is reflected as well as atmospheric scatters within the visible spectrum. Okay. Some of you responded, there is a reflected as well as radiated energy component. Why there is confusion? Because uh, many times we have discussed about it, the significance of three micrometer dividing line. If we select a spectral band, okay, uh, in the wavelength range, less than three micrometer, then how we get a radiated energy component? I hope now it is clear. Yes, sir. Uh, even some of you uh, have selected this uh, D option. Reflected, radiated, and atmospheric scatters. We don't have a radiated component in this case. Okay. If I select the spectral band uh, in the wave, uh, in a wavelength range that is beyond three micrometer towards higher side. Okay. Then it, in that case, it is correct. D option is correct. Now, uh, in the air problem, the spectral band selected in an IR band. 
is used to capture images from water and vegetation. So, know what is the spectral signature of water and vegetation in an IR band? Okay. So, in which case distal numbers are large compared to other? Band is same, that is an IR band. Given all parameters same, it's a comparative analysis and it is done from the same system. So images uh, which are collected from water and vegetation. If you analyze the reflectance of water and vegetation in an IR band, in case of clear water, no reflectance, there is a turbidity. Then we can expect some reflectance from water that is there. In vegetation, the reflectance is highest and it is more than 50%. Highest ref reflectance means the more number of energy component is reflected back toward the sensor. Okay. So in a total energy reaches at the sensor will be large in case of vegetation compared to water in an IR band. So obviously, if energy is large, it means the higher DN numbers are allocated. For, for those areas. So the DN numbers are large compared to Sir, other. Mm -hmm. Sir please, uh, what you said in last lines, please could you repeat? Uh, okay. To solve, so to solve any question, first you need to extract the information given in the problem, okay? So just uh, I'm extracting the information that is available in the given problem. So the given spectral band is fixed. It is an IR band, near infrared band. So we have a one spectral band, okay, and it is in an IR band. So the sensor which are there, that is sensitive in an IR band. So that is spectral band is used to sense an area that is comprised of water and vegetation both. So we have a ground resolution cells, picture elements from water as well as vegetation. The question is on the basis of given information, can we first can we determine like uh, uh, ground resolution cells, which, which GRC has higher DN number Okay. Uh, in case of water and vegetation. Fine. So the way uh, we generate. Sir, sir uh, I think I, I have forgot or I could not understand properly in previous class that, sir, in what basis uh, we decide that uh, this particular aspect, uh, GRC will have higher DN number and this will have lower DN number. Uh, means, sir, uh, here we are comparing between water and vegetation. Sir, uh, I please explain this part, sir. Could you be with me and just I would like to know how much uh, the contents you are aware about it. Uh, let's say when we generate a distal number, okay? So at uh, yes. generation of DN number that we do at analog to distal conversion step. Yes, are you sir. aware about that? A to D convergence? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So we have a two distal, two range of distal number. Uh, in, in the first case, it is concentrated at lower side, let's say 25. So okay, one sir. range is concentrated at, uh, let's say, average DN 25. And there is another range that is concentrated at DN, let's say, 230. If it is ZBT maze. Okay, sir. Correct? So in the okay, output, sir. in the output image, if you do the statistical analysis, so they are they are one range, central another range, central two thirty. Okay. Now we, we are trying to see this two range belongs to which kind of uh, object. Okay. Now what you need to do, because uh, in the in the A to D conversion, we generate distal number on the basis of given energy component, okay? 
So just we see the analysis measure energy component is high or low. Now do the backward analysis for the for the DN numbers at two thirty and DN number at twenty five. In which case the energy component uh, components are large. The higher so, DN numbers, higher DN numbers are allocated to the high, higher energy components. Yes, sir. If you remember that analog to digital conversion, we have a staircase kind of transfer function. Fine. Yes. So it's a kind of linear. Yes, we can say we can approximate is a linear if we talk. So higher digital numbers are allocated to the higher energy components. So okay. those higher energy, you can see the higher voltages, and higher voltages are generated corresponding to the high 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 energy components that the, which are sensed at the sensor. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So in these two cases, for DN two thirty, high magnitude of energy is sensed at the sensor compared to DN twenty five. Fine. Now back yes. project this concept on the ground. So we'll see. Uh, there are two uh, two uh, types of uh, features in the image. Okay, for one kind of features, the DN numbers are uh, at 25, around 25. While other kind of feature DN numbers are around 230. Now we we analyze how much energy uh, are generated or how much energy is reflected at the at the ground, at the GRC level. So at the sensor, we have decided for high DN number, high energy sensed, high low DN number, low energy sensed. Now back project this concept to the GRC level. Okay. So yes. at the sensor, we have a high energy component. It means from the GRC, high energy is reflected. It is a direct relation. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So if you see at the sensor. If we we at the sensor, if sensor receive high energy component from a certain GRCs, it means from those GRCs energy that is reflected, uh, I, I would say the outgoing energy is high compared to the uh, compared to the other case where at the sensor energy is low. So now we have arrived at the GRC level and we have a uh, two categories. in the first in the first categories from the ground resolution cells outgoing energy is high and that that is for the uh, digital number at 30 yes sir in uh, in in uh, in the second case in the second category we have a certain grcs okay uh, from where the the uh, the total outgoing energy is less compared to the First case, so 230 high energy, uh, high outgoing energy from the GRC, DN 25 low outgoing energy from GRC. Correct? Yes, sir. Now we map this concept to the spectral signature. So we have selected energy, we have selected our spectral band in NIR. Okay. So in NIR band, we have already we have recently discussed. In an IR band, we have a reflected energy component only. Fine. In if you analyze the total outgoing energy from the ground resolution cell at the at the ground level, okay, at the object level, then that outgoing energy is only constituted by the reflected energy component. Got it. Sir, uh, what you said last line, sir. Last actually, uh, it was voice was stuck, sir. Last, just last line. The last line is. कहाँ तक तुम्हें समझ में आया? Sir, अभी बाकी सवाल हैं, sir. बाकी last में बोला ना actually आवाज थोड़ा सा sir blur हो गई. उस वजह से सुन नहीं पाया, sir. No, uh, that is correct. What is the last statement that you understood? That that let me know. Then I will start from there. तो आपने बोला ना सर कि इसकी एनर्जी ज्यादा होगी सर वो समझ नहीं आया किसकी वाले की बोला आपने करेस्पॉन्डिंग टू डी एन टू थर्टी हाँ करेस्पॉन्डिंग टू डी एन टू थर्टी आउट गोइंग एनर्जी 
from the GRC will be will be highest. Yes, sir. While in case of DN two thirty uh, DN yes. twenty five twenty five, the outgoing energy will be lowest. Correct. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Now now we will see the outgoing energy is comprised of how many components. So the band is in an IR band. It is less than three micrometers. So outgoing energy is only constituted by the reflected component and atmospheric scatter. No. So atmospheric both. Scatter, atmospheric scatter will be at the sensor, and it, it, atmospheric scatters are constant. They are not going to vary with. Uh, I mean, with GRC we are selecting. Okay, atmospheric scatters are only dependent on which spectral band we are selecting so that will be constant okay. irrespective of from which grc energy is reflected uh, don't don't confuse okay okay sir. so we neglect that effect that we have already discussed now we have already arrived at the ground level yes okay so at the ground total outgoing energy Okay, total outgoing energy at the ground is only constituted by the energy constant. Now we will see from water and vegetation in NIR band which object has highest reflectance. Okay, so we have already arrived at the conclusion for DN two thirty. The reflected energy is there in out reflected energy comprised uh, outgoing uh, energy, total outgoing energy. Okay, so the reflected energy is highest for DN two thirty, while uh, reflected energy is lowest for DN twenty five. In NIR band, water does not reflect any component. Let's say if it is there is some turbidity, so we have a certain reflectance. So that could be from D N two twenty five. Okay. While in case of vegetation, the reflectance is more than fifty percent. Our D N two thirty is from the vegetation. Okay. Sir. Yes, sir. Excuse. Hopefully, you have understood. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Kind of backward analysis of the concept from generation of DN numbers to the analysis of energy at the sensor at the ground level, and then further on the basis of given spectral signature for the given types of features and spectral band. We do this analysis to arrive at the conclusion. It's a just simple comparative analysis. Uh, hello, so, sir. Uh, sorry for interruption. सर वॉइस काफी ब्रेक हो रही है इज इट फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू यस सर दिस इज फॉर माय सर यस सर ओ लेट मी चेक
and problem and these uh, images are captured from soil and water by a spectral band selected at 1.455 micrometer so the large dn numbers which are obtained are they from soil or water or uh, what is the correct option for this both will be zero sir Hmm. Sir, both will be zero. How many of you have done it correctly? From the response summary, I see only uh, four students have done it correctly. See, one point one point four five five is the water absorption band. Okay. and if we design our sensor at this particular wavelength okay by uh, consi considering it as a central wavelength and we select a bandwidth around it to to design a sensor so in that case in that atmosphere the total energy is absorbed okay so none of the energy components are reaching at the sensor so uh, the final dn which are generated so that will be zero irrespective of uh, the ground resolution cells okay whether they belong to soil or water in this last problem the push boom scanner system has better spatial resolution compared to wisp boom scanner system i think uh, in this case push boom scanner does not has rotating optics options are different the same problem is given earlier but in this case uh, options are different the second option is high dwell time per ground resolution cell in push boom scanning system okay push boom scanner system has multiple charge coupled devices and none of these so you need to choose the most appropriate option among these four so the spatial resolution is dependent on the how much energy is sensed at the sensor okay so let's say if we uh, elaborate our discussion in the context of this problem so let's say uh, the total amount of energy reaches at the sensor is e we selected e lambda 1 to lambda 2 okay so we have a bandwidth lambda 2 minus lambda 1 if that bandwidth is high it means the energy that is collected that will be more further if we come at the ground resolution cell level if area is large okay it means more energy is collected at the sensor similarly if sensor looks at the grc for a longer time it means the energy collected is more so in all the cases if you increase the bandwidth energy will be uh, energy will be more energy will increase if you increase the area in that case also energy will increase And similarly if you sense one grc for longer time energy will increase okay but see at the sensor we have the requirement of energy okay 
that can cross the threshold level okay so by increasing one parameter you are increasing the energy but the increase can be if let's say we have already received the sufficient energy at the sensor and you are further increasing these parameters so that will not put much effect so that by increasing a particular parameter there is a increase in energy that is not required beyond the threshold level beyond beyond the energy limit so that extra energy can be compensated by decreasing other parameters three parameters we have bandwidth spatial resolution that is area of grc okay and dwell time in case of post boom scanner system we we have a dwell time that is very high compared to wisp boom okay it means in post boom scanning system single ccd sends the corresponding grc for longer time and there is a possibility there is a extra energy collected at the sensor that is not required okay so that extra energy that is collected at the sensor can be compensated by decreasing the area being sensed so in case of post boom scanning system okay there is a possibility to decrease the area that is being sensed okay because the enough energy is already collected there is a very high dwell time compared to wisp boom so there is extra energy okay that is actually not required so that can be compensated by decreasing the area of grc and if you decrease the area of grc you will decrease the uh, if it it shape is square so if you decrease the length of one side that is m and it is called as spatial resolution so ultimately dwell time govern over here to decide why in case of post boom scanner system we get better spatial resolution compared to wisp boom so the second option is correct third option is also correct in post boom scanner system we have a multiple ccds but what is the role of having multiple ccds due to multiple ccds we have a high dwell time and actual the dwell time is directly governed by spatial resolution not uh, how many ccds we are connecting it's a secondary information okay but primary information that govern the spatial resolution is dwell time though it is high due to the array of ccds okay so we have uh, discussed all these problems and the associated concepts so i hope you have understood and uh, if there is any query uh, you can discuss related to these questions and uh, the concepts which we have discussed in the class i suggest you to keep on revising the notes and uh, uh, lecture videos okay before any quiz or any examinations and while the discussion when uh, we emphasize a certain concepts like many times i have emphasized the significance of three micrometer dividing line in the con in the context of how it finally affect the energy outgoing from ground resolution cell okay so many times we have discussed the energy components which constitute 
the outgoing energy from ground resolution cell uh, depend on the wavelength at which we are selecting the spectral band. If it is less than three micrometers, so we don't have a radiated component. Similarly, when we uh, we discussed about uh, type of types of reflection we get from GRC. So there clearly we depicted in the figure, in case of a specular reflection, snail slice followed and the energy that is reflected from the interaction point is directed in a fixed direction. Okay, is directed in the fixed direction following the snail slice. But when the surface behaving like uh, a rough surface, if surface roughness increases, uh, you can say the wavelength decreases. In both cases, what happens? The reflected energy is spread around the direction that we get following the snail slough. And in case of diffuse reflection, the reflected energy is uniformly spread in 180 degree third solid angle. Okay, so there is a kind of lobe within a solid angle. Energy is uh, outgoing from that surface. So with uh, this uh, discussion, I stop uh, this lecture session over here. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.